Good afternoon, everyone. La Nina back. Incredibly intense. And over time, mapping out how La Nina affects our weather systems, the one we're entering into right now in the spring very much matches up with 2011. The giant spike in tornadoes on the chart. Early spring, winds are spinning. Upper level, low level, and now mid-level winds. The potential for Severe weather has shifted more east, and if the dark purple is an indication of things to come, 2011 matchup, but the wild card, another factor to add in, Solar Cycle 25 has not started as the experts had forecast. This grand solar minimum and the way the sun's going to affect jet streams during this event in spring, this is why the ancients came to fear the weather. The last time we had a Democrat-led Congress and president was during the first years of the Obama administration. Janet Yellen was the Fed chair then, and now soon to be the new Treasury Secretary under Biden. Obamacare was passed, President Obama, and Congress sent billions to banks and Wall Street. That was the perfect recipe, and gold soared more than 200% from 2008 to 2011. Patriot Gold Group has the No Fee for Life IRA where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold and silver and you may be eligible for the No Fee for Life IRA. So go ahead and give the folks at Patriot Gold Group a call to discuss physical gold and silver. And the knowledge that Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated gold IRA dealer five years in a row from 2016 till present. Click the link in the description box below for more information. And now on with the video. And with the wild ride that we're experiencing globally with the climate falling out, the increase in volcanic activity, sinkholes, landslides, crustal rips, electromagnetism is driving it all. These changes we're seeing are on a cycle. And to bring us back just a mere two weeks ago, which most people have forgotten about, you might only in the back of your memory remember the largest ice storm in Texas taking down the power grid. 82 degree Fahrenheit flip in just a week from extreme cold to extreme heat. These are the types of inversions that we're going to be moving right into in springtime that are going to continue to amplify with even stronger jet streams in the wrong places. Now, what we just experienced during this winter it was on the right, that negative Arctic oscillation. You can see the flow even driving colder air down into the central and southern United States, as well as down into eastern and southern Europe. Greece, largest snowfall since the 1970s. And knowing how this is already matching up, what scares me living in this area where the highest density of possible extreme weather for the springtime coming in is not only will there be low-level winds with the upper-level jet streams, which is normal in the spring, that's how you get the vortices across at least the United States, but also occurring in Europe and now Asia. But now we're going to have a third level in there at the mid-level winds. So how is this going to affect everything coming into La Nina? And the reason I would say we're going to get that third mid-level wind, jet streams are going to be bending into different places as this grand solar minimum continues to affect the strength of the solar cycle, which should have been heading up into solar cycle 25, not anywhere close. It is stalled on the beginning of this solar cycle coming out of solar minimum. So the last update was Cislo here, February 1st. And to put it in context, coming out of the solar minimum back up into solar maximum, you can see when we repeated this back in 2010, as the solar cycle is strengthening, there should be less and less and less sun spotless days. Only 14%, 51 days in the entire year coming into, in the ramp up where we should be exactly today. This year, heading up into the intensifying solar cycle 25, that whole year only had 51 sun spotless days. Right now in 2021, 32 sun spotless days. 
So something is not strengthening as it was supposed to be, according to the experts, quote unquote. I'm still staying with John Casey, Dr. Abudzimatov, and Valentina Zarkova's research stating we're not going to go anywhere remotely close to 100 sunspots. 75 average, if even that, probably closer to 50. And this solar cycle is going to be weak, and the next one is going to be almost non-existent. Growing food on this planet is going to be a struggle moving forward, but the extremes we're going to see in terms of crustal anomalies and also weather phenomenon just goes lockstep with this low solar activity. And looking even out into a few days forward into March, almost no sunspots still. So the repeating cycle I want to come into here for this springtime tornado forecast, overlaid with the grand solar minimum, intertwined with La Nina as you can see, we have several different cycles overlapping for this season coming up. So just a few days back, at the end of February, you can see how cool the water was out into the Pacific. Cooling trend, the opposite would be El Nino. So this is a really good exercise for those of you wondering where the best places to be to move to during the Grand Solar Minimum will be. This is a not extremely extreme La Nina, but a very strong La Nina. Not the strongest on record, but very strong. So if it's wetter where you are, then you can understand every time a La Nina rolls around, wherever you are across the planet, you're going to get the repeating type of weather. Here in East Tennessee, it is so soggy and so wet and so unbelievably nonstop rain and moist that I would expect this. Every time a La Nina comes, we're going to get a super soaker event. But bringing you back to 2011, slightly different look on Nesdis versus Mercator, but still shows the same cooling anomalies off in the eastern Pacific. La Nina then as well. But that La Nina was slightly more intense than the one we're heading into. So let's look at the forecast out here from mid-February all the way through March and April. Possibility of La Nina at least 80%. But again, in the cycles, we're very close to 2011 in intensity. And what do we see from 1954 to 2014 on this chart here? That giant spike at the highest over the entire chart is 2011. So I would anticipate some incredible tornadic activity. And word of caution, have emergency supplies. You saw what happened in Texas when power went out. There's going to be no joke with this spring coming in. The extremes in weather are going to be mind-boggling. So your regular setup here with La Nina, cooler air trapped up central Midwest going up into Canada, but then we get the drier collision that we get every spring. But with La Nina, it's enhanced. And those low-level winds coming off the Gulf, getting spun on the top so the upper level winds off those jet streams that are normally in that location are now shifted. Another whole band of winds in there too in the mid-level winds, but the jet streams have also tweaked a little bit because the solar activity declining, our magnetosphere weakening is not locking the jet streams in the same locations that they normally are because the amount of solar activity declined from 2011 to now is stupendous. Nothing is as it was. The Great Reset makes sense. We're not going to be able to grow enough food for the entire planet as we did prior. So food will be more tightly controlled, but you'll need a mechanism in place to control the food and the people. I digress. Back to this spring. The wind flows are normal. What you can expect with the extreme early spring ferocious weather on the averages is what you see in this chart here, but this year it's going to shift more easterly. And what's expected as these other winds in the mid-level start to add into all of this is an unknown, truly an unknown. Now, if we could have a time machine and go back 400 years to the 1640s, 1630s, and I start to understand how the weather back then tweaked out when we're starting to see some of these same lineups... They didn't have the satellites. They could just describe what they experienced on the ground. And the most interesting and important graphic right here out of this entire video, this map. The hailstorms and the tornadoes. During the La Nina events, 
this is where you see the intensification. If it's more purple, darker purple, that's the intensification area. So where do you sit on this map? Are you in the boundary zones? Are you square in the middle of the bullseye? If you are, you need to get yourself really set up for power outages, water, food, and different things to keep you at least for a couple of weeks in case systems go down. You know, in Texas, things are starting to come back finally after two and a half to three weeks. If you were prepared during that time, you could have ridden this out. Systems are coming back up now. Unprepared? Yikes. So that brings us to two different facets here. One, it's springtime. Please learn to grow your own food. It's going to be really important for us moving forward to be able to grow our own food and not have to rely so much on centralized delivery systems. And that's just a given for all these things we're seeing globally anyway. And secondly, storable foods, two-week, four-week emergency food supply. The links for True Leaf Market and My Patriot Supply are in the description box below. It's a great way to support the channel and also get you and your families more ready. Grand Solar Minimum Prepared or Extreme Weather Prepared. One's a shorter term event, one's a longer term event. I do wish you the best in your preparations. Distant early warning, this spring is going to be something that will not be forgotten.